If you encounter issues like these when using auto turntable mode, continue watching. In this video, we will go over MetroX's auto turntable mode, covering turntable connection, turntable setup, and case demonstrations. Both the dual axis and large turntables can be connected to Revo Skin 5 MetroX for use in auto turntable mode. Power the dual axis turntable via its power cable before connecting it. Open the software and go to the scanning interface. Tap the accessories data at the top, select dual axis turntable. Choose the correct turntable with its SN code on the back and tap the connect. To connect the large turntable, first power it via its power cable and turn on the switch. Next, launch the software, go to the scanning interface, click on A Accessories at the top, and choose the large turntable to establish a connection. Now, let's look at the turntable settings. Please note that the turntable settings button appears once you switch to auto turntable mode. Tap this button to access the turntable settings. First, set the rotation direction for the dual axis turntable. Next, set the interval angle to determine how many degrees the turntable will rotate before the scanner captures a frame. For instance, setting it to 20 degrees means the turntable pauses every 20 degrees for the scanner to capture a frame. Next is the turntable speed, measured by the time for one full rotation. A larger value means a slower speed. Next, you can set the number of rotations and the tilt angle for each rotation. The dual axis turntable can tilt plus or minus 30 degrees. You can set multiple rotations with different tilt angles in one scan to ensure you capture the entire surface of the object. When using the large turntable, first set its rotation direction. Next, set the interval angle to determine how many degrees the turntable will rotate before the scanner captures a frame. For instance, setting it to 20 degrees means the turntable pauses every 20 degrees for the scanner to capture a frame. Next is the turntable speed, measured by the time for one full rotation. A larger value means a slower speed. Next, you can set its number of rotations. Both the dual axis and large turntables have a very set I option to restore default settings. For beginners, the default settings can be paired with various rotations to obtain a complete model. In this demonstration, we've selected the dual axis turntable due to the object's size and complexity. Secure the object on the turntable to prevent shaking. Then, power the turntable using its power cable. Open the software, connect the scanner, and create a new project to enter the scanning interface. Tap the accessories, then select Dual Axis Turntable A to connect it. We'll then select a Feature Scan as this object is feature-rich. Switch the scan mode to the Auto Turntable, choose a General O4 object type, and enable a color scan. Click the I Auto Turntable Scan Settings A button, and you will see Dual Axis Turntable connected. Then, set the parameters accordingly. First, set the rotation direction to either counterclockwise or clockwise. Next is the interval angle. Avoid setting a large interval angle when scanning medium-sized objects, as it may cause details to be missed. Set a moderate rotation speed to prevent shaking when the turntable pauses. Next, set the number of rotations and tilt angle. We recommend setting the tilt angle to 0 degrees for the first rotation. This ensures the scanner captures the object horizontally, aiding in smooth frame stitching and preventing tracking loss in later scans. To capture as many model details and hard-to-reach areas as possible, you can set multiple rotations and adjust their tilt angles later to large values e.g., plus 25 degrees and minus 25 degrees for the fourth and fifth rotations. After completing all settings, tap OK. After setting up the turntable, adjust the distance between the object and the scanner. Click to switch to the white model preview, making it easier to observe real-time model data. Then click a start. 
For this scan, we manually adjust the depth camera's exposure. Set the exposure value according to the red and blue changes on the object's surface, keeping it as gray as possible. During the scan, the distance indicator may show the scanner outside the optimal range due to tilt angle changes. This is acceptable if there are no stitching errors or tracking loss. Enter the post-processing interface once the scan is completed and perform point cloud fusion. Next, detect and remove isolated data, then detect and remove overlapping data, and finally, process the mesh. After meshing, detect the small holes on the object's surface and perform hole filling. Lastly, perform texture mapping. This video serves as a reference. Adjust the settings for your scan. Share your experiences in the comments, 